narcissistic people like to play a game of control however they don't want to be in control of themselves their negative reactions they want to pass responsibility over to somebody else for the things that the narcissist does wrong narcissistic people do not do responsibility and one of the main differences between a narcissist and a non-narcissist is a narcissist does not take responsibility and a non-narcissist not only takes responsibility for their own behavior they also end up taking responsibility for the behavior of those of the narcissist that are around them one way a narcissistic person can gain control over situations and help the narcissist in the smear campaign against those around them help the narcissist discredit your character ruin your reputation to those around you and around them so that people sympathize with the narcissist is by using reactive abuse against you so that you take responsibility and the narcissist doesn't have to and the the difference between reactive abuse and abuse is a narcissistic well a person will abuse you in some of the most horrifying ways that you can't even see is happening to you at times and then they will pass responsibility over to you you will end up downplaying their behavior well it's not that bad it doesn't happen very often if only i hadn't have done this they wouldn't have done that you end up taking responsibility for their behavior whereas a no narcissistic person will chip away at you and then when you react to them you will take responsibility for your behaviour. I shouldn't have done that. That was wrong. I need to make it up to them. Why have I behaved in that way? That's wrong. You don't want other people to find out about your behaviour because you know it's wrong and you wish you hadn't have acted in that way. Meanwhile, a narcissistic person will be saying to you and those around you, are you having a bad day? You've gone a little bit crazy. See, look what I have to put up with. They're looking to gain that sympathetic attention. They will play the grandiose hero of how incredible they are at putting up with you and helping you out, even though you treat them in such an awful way, while playing the victim of, look how badly they treat me, while you're the one that's getting abused by them and you're, oh, I can't believe they put up with me after the way I've been with them, I'm so lucky to have them. Narcissists can get you trapped in that mindset that everything is your fault and nothing is their fault. When it comes to reactive abuse, a narcissist is going to bait you in any way they can. They're going to taunt you. They're going to humiliate you. They're going to criticise you. They're going to judge you. They're going to mock you. They're going to invalidate you. They're going to lie to you. They're going to deceive you. They're going to cause that intrigue within you. They're going to frustrate you. They're going to fail to answer a simple question. They're going to cause sleep deprivation within you so that you become that tired, that drained, that frustrated. You end up becoming that resentful and angry that you lose control of your emotions and then you react to the narcissist. You might scream, you might shout, you might lash out, you might start insulting them, you might even fall silent on them, you might punch things. There are various methods you might react in a negative, abusive way to the narcissist. At which point, that is all the narcissist needs, they all the evidence a narcissist needs. They forget the lead up to events and they make it so you forget the lead up to events by gaslighting your reality. So that they can turn around and say, what's wrong with you? Are you having a bad day? I think you might be depressed. We ought to get you to the doctors. I think you're going crazy. And if they can get you to do it in front of an audience, that's when they're going to turn around and say, see, look at what I have to put up with. Because they don't care about you. They care about preserving their own image to those around you. Narcissistic people do not look to take responsibility for their behaviour. They look to get you going, to get a reaction from you so that they can blame you for their behaviour. And because they never take responsibility for their behaviour, they do not change their behaviour. 
Whereas you will find yourself constantly changing who you are to serve them. Only it never works out because there is no pleasing, envious, self-entitled, hypocritical people. Because no matter how much you give them, they are always looking for more. So reactive abuse is when you're acting in response to being stimulated in such a way that you react to them in an emotional manner rather than a logical manner. You no longer are in control of your reactions to that person due to the environment they're creating, the atmosphere they're creating, the reality they are creating within you. So you react to them in an emotional manner, not a logical one. And then when you're thinking logically, you question and doubt and blame yourself. You then want to make it up to them, not recognising what they're doing to you. And it's not that easy to recognise because they are going to keep you sleep deprived. They're going to keep you confused. They're going to gaslight your reality. They're going to drain you. They're going to exhaust you so that you can no longer think from that logical manner. They're going to cause that much intrigue and frustration and anger and resentment within you that you begin to lash out more and more at them. And then they're going to tell you that you're the one that's losing your mind. And because you take responsibility for your behaviour, you're led to believe that you're losing your mind, not recognising that they are the very person that's making you feel that way and making you act in that way. And we do need to take responsibility for our own behaviour. We do need to take responsibility for our feelings. We do need to recognise that those who can bring the worst out in us, because we are all capable of the worst, are not the kinds of people we want to be around. When we're trying to bring the best out in people, we need to be around those who try to bring the best out in us and leave those who bring out the worst in you so that they can shame, blame, humiliate, mock, criticise you some more and get further reactions from you. Narcissistic people instigate a game of control by insulting you, by intimidating you, by mocking you, by judging you, by criticising you, by humiliating you and they're going to do it in such a way that when you react to them emotionally they're going to turn around and say whoa somebody's feeling a bit sensitive today it's not my fault you're too sensitive I'm lighting up you should you should learn to take a joke when it's not a joke it's not funny they are purposefully insulting and humiliating you to get that emotional rise out of you and it can be something as simple as crying which can be perceived as emotional manipulation which is a reaction narcissistic people will play the woe is me victim they will put on those false tears to things that they created to gain that sympathetic attention yet they're going to go all out to invalidate you and insult you till they bring you into tears emotionally drained and frustrated so you feel like you're almost guilt tripping them when you're not but you're you're that exhausted you're that emotionally drained that the the tears come out and a narcissist isn't going to show you compassion like you would that and when they're crying in front of you, you've got that compassion for them. You want to make it right with them. You want to help them. Narcissistic people want to help themselves to avoid taking responsibility. Therefore, they're going to stand and watch you cry with a glint in their eye and blame you for the pain they've caused you. And they're going to accuse you of overreacting, being a little bit too sensitive. Because in their eyes you emotionally reacting in that manner to them is all the proof they need that you're the one that's too sensitive. A narcissistic person will unjustly accuse you of cheating, usually because they are cheating and they're going to cause that much intrigue within you that you might snoop through their things. 
which we shouldn't do. However, they're going to cause that much frustration and intrigue. They won't have an open, honest communication with you. You cannot have sincere communication with insincere people. So you might snoop through their things. You might not. You might just happen to see a message pop up on their phone. You go and ask them about this and they're going to go, wow, you've looked through my things. I thought I could trust you. You have trust issues. So their behaviour has provoked that reaction from you because you care you're coming from an emotional place. You ask them about this and they twist it round onto you. You might just find out about a lie they've told you. You might think, oh yeah, people do tell white lies to try and impress people. You might just go to try and discuss this with them. Narcissistic people do not want to be called out on their behaviour. Therefore, they're going to go all out to bait you into that reaction, to distract you from their actions, to convince you that you're the one that's the problem. So you don't recognise that they are causing those problems within you. They're causing those emotional reactions within you. Narcissistic people don't look for closure. They look to open up your wounds. They look to open up and probably poke around at your insecurities to emotionally manipulate you. They're looking to coercively control you. They're looking to get you into a state of fear and desperation and anxiety, into a state where you don't speak out for fear of how you might react so they can continue doing the things they do to you without getting called out. And a narcissistic person will film your reactions, not as evidence as to what they're going through, but as proof to themselves that you're the one with the issue. They'll instill cameras into your home. Most genuine people don't like filming somebody in that state anyway. Most genuine people who are filming for evidence don't go blasting it on social media. They don't wind somebody up in a car and then film their reaction. And look what I have to deal with. Most people with compassion are like, whoa, what's wrong? What's happened? How can I help you? What's going on? And some narcissistic people are a little bit more covert. So they will get you to that point and then they will stand back and say, what's wrong? How can I help? They will get you to the doctors. They will get you on antidepressants. They will play the grandiose hero of how they're helping you through addictions such as alcohol because you become that drained and stressed. You might like a drink or two and they're going to use every little thing they can so that they can flex. They want to take a partial truth falsify the information, lie to those around you so that the narcissist can evade exposure. Narcissists get that reaction from you and you're the one that ends up full of guilt, shame, blame, anger, resentment, common emotion. We all feel it. It's how we deal with it. Um, when you are deprived of sleep, when you're exhausted, it's very difficult to grab a hold of our emotions and recognise them and think from a logical way. We think from an emotional way. And then when we react emotionally, we feel guilty, we feel remorseful, we feel like we need to make it up to them, we have to apologise to them because we recognise that we've done wrong. Narcissistic people won't apologise to you. They'll turn around to you and say, well, if you hadn't have done this, Projection, really, because a narcissist will provoke you, you will emotionally react, in which case, if a narcissist hadn't have done that, you wouldn't have emotionally reacted to them. However, because you're not thinking from their level, you're blaming your emotional reaction, where a narcissist is thinking from their level. They provoke you to get that reaction from you. So deep down, they know what they're doing. So when they react to you, they're going to blame you and say, well, if you hadn't then I wouldn't. They do not do responsibility. However, as you're feeling guilty, as you're feeling blame, as you're feeling ashamed, you do all you can to make it up to them. You do all you can to avoid other people finding out because you feel bad for your behaviour. And you no longer dare speak up because you know your reactions weren't right. You'll often find a survivor will say both sides of the story in their own way they'll say well they did this and then I did that and I did that and they did this whereas a narcissistic person will solely put responsibility the other person did this that and the other and I just tried so hard to help them
narcissistic people rely on your compassion they rely on your willingness to take responsibility they rely on your agreeableness they rely on your readiness to forgive them they rely on your ability to take responsibility so they can blame and shame and judge and criticize and mock you so you feel lucky you feel grateful to have them putting up with you not recognizing what they're doing to you now when it comes to anger and resentments and emotions. We can suppress our emotions for many reasons. You will often find though, because of the emotional state you're left in around a narcissist, you can no longer suppress your emotions. You can no longer hold on to them. They bubble all the time and you can react towards them. And it doesn't matter where you are or who you're around, you can just no longer hold it in. You can be in the middle of a courtroom and you can emotionally react to the lies and the bullshit that the narcissist is coming out with. But the, those in the room don't see the lead up, they just see your emotional reaction. Where you'll notice a narcissist can more often than not suppress themselves very well when there are witnesses to their behaviour. Narcissistic people do not struggle with anger management issues. They struggle with lying issues. And they can control themselves, they can control their anger very, very well when there are witnesses around. Narcissistic people can control their anger. They just choose to control it when it suits them. Yet they will get the person they're abusing to the point where they can no longer control their anger due to the confusion, the gaslighting and the shit desperation they're in when around a narcissistic person. When it comes to reactive abuse, the lead up is not your fault. You do have to take responsibility for your behaviour because who doesn't take responsibility for their behaviour? Narcissistic people. So it's, it's not that you should take responsibility and then make it up to them. It's that you should take responsibility and recognise, ooh, this person really brings out a side of me that I don't like. Yes, I do have these emotions within me and this kind of person isn't going to validate. They're going to invalidate and make things worse for me. So I need to sidestep away from this person, leave them to live their life while I live my life. You are not responsible for being provoked. That's their responsibility. They provoked you. You are responsible for how you reacted. It's difficult. It's hard. It, it, with everything that goes off underlying, it's it's very very difficult because there's there's taking responsibility to the extent where the narcissist can get away with it more, and there's taking responsibility to the extent where you can then step away and distance yourself. You are not to blame for somebody abusing you. You are not to blame for your reactions to that person. However, you do have to take responsibility for those reactions so that you can learn and change and become a better person for you. If anyone has any thoughts on this video, please do add those into the comments. Thank you very much to all the returning subscribers and your continued support with the channel. It's greatly appreciated. If you are new to the channel, I'm Elizabeth Shaw. This channel is all about narcissistic behaviour. To give you more understanding of the people you might be dealing with within your life, how to handle yourself around those people if you cannot go no contact, and different methods to find what works for you to help you understand and overcome narcissistic and emotional abuse. If you do find the information helpful on the channel, please do subscribe. If you are looking for further help and support in understanding and overcoming narcissistic and emotional abuse, I do have several online guides available and those teachable links are in the video description. If you're looking for someone to speak to or have partnered with BetterHelp and their sponsored link is also in the video description. Go out there and create the day that you deserve because you do deserve to have an amazing day. Bye.